In today's video, we're gonna share several tips for how you can survive a long distance relationship. Julie and I did two and a half years of long distance relationship between Los Angeles, California and Gothenburg, Sweden, which is a nine hour time difference, about an 11 hour flight, and I don't know how many miles or kilometers. It's long, it's far away. Yeah. Long. It's a long, long way away from each other, Los Angeles and Sweden. It's basically the maximum long distance relationship you can do besides maybe... Like Australia or something yeah, would be longer, but... Right to Australia. But we've actually had a lot of people reach out to us, um, close friends and then people also through YouTube and say, how did you manage your long distance relationship? So it's actually quite common these days uh, for people to be in a long distance relationship. So we just thought we'd share the tips that work for us. Um, and yeah, and this is what we like figured out that worked for us the best and yeah, why not share it with you guys? We'll just preface by saying any long distance relationship is obviously very difficult and tough, but these tips work for us and hopefully they can work for you too. So tip number one for surviving a long distance relationship is to talk on the phone often and also have a schedule for the talk. So for example, Sweden and California, um, when I, when you went to work around like eight o'clock in the morning, it was 5 p.m. in Sweden and I was just finishing up work. So I would talk on my way home from work, he would talk on his way to work. Yeah. And then you would call me again at lunchtime around 12, where in Sweden the time would be nine o'clock. Yeah in the night. So we would just like say goodnight, talk for a few minutes. Um, so just like find your schedule depending on how many hours of time difference you have. But I will say it's important to not check in too much. So some people that do long distance check in like five, 10, 15 times a day and it just becomes like too clingy. So yeah. actually some advice I would say is don't check in too much. Like once or twice a day is probably enough. And we would go a couple of days without talking even. So yeah. it's not a big deal if you don't talk every day. The number two tip is to have complete trust in your partner and to leave nothing to the imagination. So, I mean, obviously a long distance relationship, um, if you kind of are in a bad place and you let your mind wander, you're like, oh, is my partner going out with friends too much? Are they seeing another person? Are they doing this, doing that? that's not going to do you any good and you're just going to get paranoid. So mm -hmm. you just have to have complete trust and that's why you're in the relationship in the first place. And I mean, that is sort of the foundation of any relationship is yeah. just to trust one to another. trust. You can't yeah. go around living in fear. And of course, in the beginning of a long distance relationship, it can be hard to trust the other person. I would say like when you're not used to the distance itself, but you kind of just have to make up your mind. Okay. I'm either going to trust this person and be together or I'm not going to trust them and then what's the point then we can just break up instead of just have your mind being crazy about stuff. Yeah. Let's say for example you were going to go out with friends. T to me it would be nice if you said like I'm going out with this, this, this and this person because then you don't think about oh is there going to be other people there that yeah. I don't know about or like stuff like yeah. that. The third tip for a successful long distance relationship is to have a constant reminder of the other person. So that can be like a gift that you receive from that person that you keep in your bedroom or somewhere visible. But for us, it was just having the background photo of our phone um, as a photo of us as a couple. So every time you pick up your phone, you're kind of reminded of the other person and it's just a nice thing. Tip number four, for surviving a long distance relationship is to write love letters to each other. And we used to do that a couple of times throughout the two and a half years. Uh, it's just nice to write something in your own handwriting and go to the mailbox and mail it. And then two weeks later or one week later, the other person gets a handwritten letter from you from the other side of the world. And when you're handwriting a letter, you put more thought into what you're actually saying as opposed to a text message where you might just like fire off whatever comes to mind. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's a good opportunity to kind of share your true feelings. And also um, it's just romantic to get a letter in the mail and something that you can keep forever. The fifth tip for surviving long distance relationship is to always have a trip planned to see the other person. So we always had a vacation or a trip to LA or a trip to Sweden booked. Um, 
so that we kind of were counting down on our calendar. I mean, like literally on the calendar, it would like cross off like, all right, six weeks, whatever. And we tried to do about every eight weeks. We tried to see each other about every eight weeks um, as our schedule and finances allowed. I mean, it is pretty expensive to fly to Europe every eight weeks or vice versa. But sometimes we met in the middle, like for example, we met in New York, which is about halfway. We met in London, London. we met in uh, Mexico, uh, Berlin, Berlin. so uh, Copenhagen. It's very important to always have something to look forward to. If you are just kind of in this relationship and in this uncertainty of when you're gonna see each other next, I think it's really bad. Um, but to have a trip always look forward to kind of keeps like the fire going and keeps you motivated. And I will say that because you don't see each other, when you go on these trips um, to see each other for like a week or two, it's like the best vacation ever. It's like really fun. And it's also very special when you meet the other person after not seeing them for about eight weeks. Just like when you hug each other at the airport and you touch like their hands again for the first time in eight weeks and you like smell their smell, it's just What was the long, What was the longest we went without seeing each other? I think 10 or 11 weeks. Yeah, it's like What's the almost three months. Almost yeah. three months. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy that long. I'm happy we don't have it anymore. By the way, we try to record videos whenever we have time. So if you want to see more videos about relationships or about living in Europe, or if you want to see travel vlogs, whatever, just go ahead and click the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And uh, we try to respond to all of them. Before we go on to the next tip, we just wanted to give a shout out to Samsa Samsa. It's a Danish clothing brand that sent us these cool shirts that we're wearing and they have amazing quality and uh, really cool style. I think all the Danish brands and the Danish style right now is kind of like the peak of European style. Yeah, love Danish brands. And Samsa Samsa is my favorite as well. I love this tiger shirt. Yeah. It's good on the weekends and on, at work and stuff. So, so if you want to check them out, there's a link in the description. So uh, just head down there and click on it. Tip number six for surviving a long distance relationship is to always have a future plan. Meaning that you have to talk about where you're going to live in the future, what the future is going to look like. Um, just so you kind of both have the same idea on where you're going in the future. And then, I mean, the, the plan can always change a little bit throughout, you know, the time, but you kind of have like a goal in the future. Yeah, I mean, you have to sort of agree on something in the future. So whether it was me moving to Sweden or us moving back to LA eventually, you kind of have to have something that you agree on. You can't just- um, Just keep you, going. You can't just not. long distance without a future plan. And yeah, like we don't know where we're gonna end up. Like that's not gonna work obviously. So yeah, it's very important to have a mutually agreed upon plan. And talk about it and share your feelings and just be open yeah. and communicate, I would say. Yeah. The seventh and final tip for surviving a long distance relationship is to see it as an opportunity. Um, so you can't just go around being negative about being in a long distance relationship. You kind of have to see the positive sides about it. Um, so for me, for example, I was living in Los Angeles with my two best friends uh, from high school. We had an apartment in Santa Monica. I kind of knew in the back of my head that this was probably going to be the last time in my life that I was going to be living with my close friends or have roommates. So I kind of cherished that and made the most of it every day, like try to hang out with my friends as much as possible. Just knowing in the back of my head that I'd eventually be moving in with you. Um, and although moving in with you has like been amazing, it was also a really fun time living with like my two best friends and honestly not something I'll get to experience. Um, and then also, I guess you could just see the positive sides of like having your own time. So coming home from work and you don't, you know, you can be alone if you're like introverted like me, that's actually a pretty positive thing. So mm. what else did and you see? And me as an extrovert, I could just hang out with friends and stuff if I wanted to. So um, yeah, I agree with you. You could kind of just do whatever you wanted to without kind of consoling with the other person. Yeah, so in this day and age with Skype and FaceTime and uh, Facebook and YouTube, whatever, Snapchat, it's actually pretty easy to be in a long distance relationship, I feel, or maybe Way not. Way easier than back in the days, of course. Of course. yeah, not, not easy, but it's actually very doable. Um, like I said, we did it for two and a half years and that time just flew by. And now we've been together for, how long we've we been together? Four and a half. Now we've been together for four and a half years. So. 
Um, I mean, m the majority of our relationship is actually long distance. Um, so it is doable and it's not that bad and just see the positive sides about it. Like you get to go on vacation every eight weeks if, mm -hmm. if you can make it happen. So yeah, um, if you have any tips to share below about your long distance relationship or you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. We read every single comment and try to respond to as many as possible. And uh, yeah. yeah, thanks for watching.